The first time I was on this landscape was in 1977 and 78 when I did some survey work related to the two hydroelectric projects upstream. And I've been here off and on for uh, a number of times. Uh, there are a lot of, of people who have things to say and I don't want to take up much time. But I think there's a couple of things that I need to do. And, and the first is to put into context some of the comments by the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer about the Menominee Tribe's Magpa claim. I was asked to travel with former Tribal Chairman Gary Besaw and Tribal Historic Preservation Officer David Greeno to the University of, of Michigan to review the remains that were there and the associated objects. And interestingly enough, the people at the Office of Research at the University of Michigan said, we're perfectly willing to give you these remains as unaffiliated cultural remains. But if you want to claim a cultural affiliation, we want you to follow, we want you to follow this approach. And then we had a 150-page document that had to be fulfilled and go through demonstrating this preponderance of evidence as to why the Menominee people should claim some kind of relationship to this river. <clears throat> Menominee people don't have any difficulties understanding their oral traditions. And the three things I want to share with you today are obviously not addressed to them because they've heard them time and time again. But for those of you who are not familiar with some of those traditions about their relationship to this body of water and this landscape, I want to share just three uh, bits of evidence. Right across the river from us, there are several dance circles. On February 22, 1931, Bernard uh, Kakatosh, Louis Bernard Kakatosh, stood in the, in the center of one of those dance rings. You can go to uh, Google the Milwaukee Journal for February 22, 1931, and read those documents for yourself. Uh, it was also uh, published later with another interview in the Herald Leader on March 28, 1936. The area right behind us, if you get a chance to look at this map, is currently called the 60 Islands area. By Menominee people, I am told, it's known as Namakachuri, which literally means the dog's belly. There's a narrative about the dog's belly and this particular landscape. And I'm not going to bore you with this long, drawn-out story, but simply put, during fasting, uh, an attractive young woman from the Menominee village at the mouth of the river had a, a vision, had a dream about a spirit that told her to come here. And he shared with her the bounty of this landscape. She went back to the mouth of the Menominee River and brought her family and relatives to live here. That's published in um, the Marinette Eagle Star in August 17th, 1929. Uh, it was republished by the Marinette County Historian in September 1988, volume 13, number 3. And finally, there's a story that is legendary, the Battle of the Pierce Forehead, that deals with the relationships between two villages, one upstream that the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer suggested maybe this locality, and one at the mouth of the Menominee River. It was recorded by C.C. Trowbridge when he was the Indian agent at Green Bay in the 1820s. So if you're interested in Menominee traditions, there are many published versions, but that's unnecessary to those people who self-identify as Menominee people. They're very comfortable with their own oral traditions and don't need universities and academics to tell them what they believe. All right, the archaeology, you're standing in the middle of what Albert Spaulding in 1956 reported as the White uh, Rapids Mound Group and Village Site. We're not going to have time for a tour today, but I can ask you to do two things. If you walk just a short distance into the woods on this side, or behind Ben's truck on this side, you'll see examples of these raised agricultural fields. It's a landscape that stretches for more than two miles along the shores of the Menominee River. There's only one other place that I've seen a landscape like this in the 50 plus years that I've been kicking around the Great Lakes doing archaeology. There is this landscape and there is the Menominee Reservation, both of which are a testament to hundreds and hundreds of years of sustainable organic agriculture and a life way that allows the generations to persist generation after generation with a well-developed uh, landscape. 
Um, I, I think that's uh, about all I can say that would add anything to this gathering. It's certainly an important thing, and I want to thank Guy and the Water Walkers for inviting me yesterday to stomp along with them. These 73-year-old arthritic knees didn't get as far as they'd like to, uh, but it was, it was really an inspiring kind of, of uh, situation for me, and I'm happy to be here today to share whatever I can. As you get lunch, if you get a chance to walk past this map, this document that we've got here, you'll see the outline of the mine pit and the layout of the mine complex itself. There are 21 or 22 archaeological sites recorded within the footprint of that mine. Um, hopefully we will get some uh, better responses from continued uh, discussion and dialogue with uh, Michigan state officials. Thank you.